Hello and welcome to my session on open source observability at AWS. My name is Michael Hausenblas and I'm an open source product developer advocate in the container service team. Now let's have a look. What is observability and why you should pay attention to this topic? I live in Ireland and I thought I'd take a shamrock here to visualize, to represent the three parts of observability or to be more precise, of telemetry. So the process of getting signals, collecting them from somewhere and bringing them together in a central place to do something useful with that. We usually call that analyzing them. These three parts are logs, metrics and traces. So let's have a look at each of them. First of logs. Logs are discrete events that happen somewhere in your program. They're usually timestamped, not a hard requirement, but good to have and can be structured. Again, not a hard requirement, but it's a really good thing to have, especially for automation purposes. And here is an example that I took from a Kubernetes cluster. Moving on to metrics. Metrics are regularly sampled data points. Uh, they are timestamped. That's a hard requirement there. Have a numeric value uh, and typically one or more dimensions and or labels. Think of metrics as kind of like um, they give you an idea of the health or how your system is doing. So, for example, that could be a uh, number of processed requests per second or the utilization of your CPUs or similar things that give you an idea what is going on there and, as I said, numeric values, how, how are trends and rates going. Last but not least, we have traces. Traces are kind of logs but in a context. So think of a request comes in, typically in a microservices environment, and many different microservices touch this request. That's what the request path is about. And if you take all these things together along a request path, uh, along certain services, then you have a trace and you see what's going on across your distributed system. This is an example here, a screenshot of the Jaeger UI. That's one of the when, many ways how you can consume a distributed trace. Now, a quick reminder, when I talk about observability, I'm really talking about observability across the entire stack. So from the very much infrastructure level, you could have, for example, an EC2 uh, bare metal instance, virtualized, virtualized environments, container and runtime, for example, Lambda, and the application and business level metrics. Quick reminder, observability in the context of our managed offerings, you probably know that metrics and logs are done via Cloud, CloudWatch, or you can use and consume, collect uh, and consume uh, metrics and logs via CloudWatch. And for traces, we have X-Ray. And to give you a bit of an idea, overall, all that this slide is really telling you, both CloudWatch and X-Ray are really scalable, reliable systems uh, that you can depend on and can use in any and every setup. Now we're switching gears and have a look at the wider open source community, specifically the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. The CNCF has a landscape, and I zoomed into one part that is of interest for our discussion here, and that is the observability and analysis part. If you look at the blue boxed um, projects here, or products here, those are the open source products and projects that are part of CNCF. So they are maintained, they are developed in the context of CNCF. There are many, many more commercial offerings, SaaS offerings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in the context of CNCF, these blue boxed ones, those are the ones of interest. These are the open source projects that uh, we, amongst others, are contributing to. Having a closer look at that, we have Prometheus, Jaeger, and FluentD that are graduated projects. We have Cortex and Thanos that are incubating. And we have Open Telemetry, Open Metrics, Chaos Mesh, and Litmus that uh, are in the sandbox level. So, Usually when um, someone uh, is interested in sharing their um, project with CNCF, they typically come in at the sandbox level and then over time, as you demonstrate uptake, as you demonstrate that the community is behind that and as it graduates, stabilizes, it moves up uh, the stack there. 
And there's also the SIG observability. Um, I'm part of that. Um, we do due diligence, for example, for this project. We have a look at trying to coordinate um, efforts, align things uh, amongst these projects. In September, the uh, CNCF have done an end-user-based technology radar, essentially looked at these uh, different projects and uh, came up with an assessment on where, in terms of maturity, in terms of uptake, uh, certain projects are. And uh, this is a, an interesting piece of information for you, and I uh, included the link if you want to check it out and see for yourself what's going on there. Let's now have a look at the upstream contributions, specifically in, in the context of CNCF, that we in AWS uh, have been doing over the past uh, time. Some examples, and I'm again structuring it uh, along these three parts of the telemetry that I introduced you earlier to, uh, logs, metrics, and traces. Let's have a closer look at that. The first one, um, and the, the blog post that I uh, link to here, you can check out for yourself, uh, is a project that the product name is called Firelens, open source project is called Fluent D and Fluent Bit, that in a nutshell essentially is a log router. So imagine you have in the infrastructure or application uh, layer uh, parts that produce logs, and you want to decide that uh, logs should go into a certain area. So, you, for example, you could have a Kubernetes application that uh, has a certain namespace, and uh, an application in that namespace should be logging to S3, for example, or Kinesis, for example. That is what uh, what Fluent Bit does, and we um, made that usable. Work with partners, and uh, now you can you have the entire freedom to decide where to log where to route these logs and, and how and where to consume them. Two exemplary setups or integrations that we've done is for uh, ECS, Amazon ECS, our AWS native uh, container orchestrator, where um, we essentially provide this uh, file lens component as part of the control plane, and you uh, use the, the normal declarative way to define the log routing and then can as I said, uh, either in within AWS, uh, native CloudWatch, S3, or, or Elasticsearch, um, or in, in some external partner provided uh, environment like Datadog or Splunk, for example, consume those logs. Somewhat similarly uh, done for uh, Kubernetes, our managed offering EKS here, um, where the FireLens or FluentBit container is part of the uh, data plane, uh, but overall, more or less the same um, DX or UX. Moving on to metrics. Uh, this example here is um, showing how you can consume Prometheus metrics uh, in CloudWatch Container Insights. Um, and that one, I, together with the logs, wanted to show you in a little bit greater detail. So I've put together uh, a little example here provisioning a Kubernetes cluster, an EKS cluster to be more precise, using EKS Cuddle with um, a managed node groups with two nodes in there, then a little example, an ingress so that we can get traffic from the outside, um, and the pod that ha has the actual application in there. So this is the overall setup. We're using uh, Linkerd here, a very uh, simple uh, mesh setup uh, that has comes with a, a built-in Grafana uh, conf pre-configured, and we're providing these uh, metrics uh, and logs uh, to both Grafana for, for the, the metrics, application level metrics, and CloudWatch, where you then will see both the metrics and the logs. So how does that look like? If we look at what is running there across uh, all the namespaces in that Kubernetes cluster, you would see the Amazon CloudWatch agent uh, that re is responsible for the metrics collection and, and forwarding it to, to CloudWatch, and then uh, Linkerd, which would be the service mesh, and then our Nginx uh, example. This is the, the control plane logs in action, and last but not least, the focus uh, in this demo, the metrics. So you would see with one um, collector, with one piece of, of uh, part uh, taking these these metrics you could uh, have uh, you could view them you could uh, consume them analyze them in both grafana and uh, in, in cloudwatch you might have different policies you might have um, you know for infrastructure and application level uh, different uh, people looking at these these metrics so you have all the freedom that you need here 
third example, comes out of tracing. Uh, open telemetry, I'll come back to that in a moment, is much more than just tracing, but in this specific uh, example, I wanted to highlight a, a C++ library contribution uh, that we did. And again, the blog posts where you can see all the details there. Now, talking about next steps. If we step back before we step forward and have a look at the challenges, this is something that uh, I've seen a lot working in the community, working with our customers. And one thing comes up over and over again, and that is that you have to use different SDKs and agents to collect the signals and then to analyze them. This is obviously not a good thing. By extension, if your developers spend a lot of time using these different SDKs and different um, collectors and have to deal with different collectors to instrument your applications, that definitely decreases the velocity instead of increasing it. Um, there's also the problem that if you have many, um, for example, in, in Kubernetes, it would be a sidecar pattern uh, in, in a pod, many agents running that are used to collect these uh, different signals and forward them, send them to a certain place to be consumed. That also has an impact on the resource consumption, which means you're essentially wasting money. And also manually correlating all these things is obviously not very, um, you know, a great thing and, and also error prone. So we want to, if possible, avoid these things. And the answer is, Open telemetry. Open telemetry is another CNCF observability project that came out of the merger between Open Census and Open Tracing. Luckily, these two communities came together and um, created this wonderful uh, standard called Open Telemetry, covering all the three parts of telemetry that we discussed, logs, metrics, and traces. And the good news is we contribute to open telemetry. We are part of open telemetry. We have a distro for open telemetry that you can check out under aws-otel.github.io. And with that, you have the entire freedom to decide where and how to consume your logs, traces and metrics. So you can now, essentially what I hinted at earlier on with the demo in a, in a rather simple way, do in a very flexible way and uh, use various managed and, and uh, you know, do-it-yourself offerings to consume and to analyze all your telemetry data, all your signals. So looking at all of that, thinking how can you benefit from what I just told you? The first one is something I believe very much in, based on my experience in the community last 20 years, um, the freedom of choice. Being able to use the best of class for any given use case or workload is something that is really something that you, you cannot compare with anything else. So. Given that with open telemetry now you have this freedom of choice, um, we are really in a, in a great place now. Somewhat uh, connected to that is that, if possible, you should be uh, not only using and relying on open source, but most importantly on open standards. And two of them, uh, I already mentioned open telemetry, and specifically for tracing, there is a W3C. Um, standardization uh, spec out there called trace context that essentially um, standardizes how the information, the, the context is propagated between these different services. But if you only look at one thing today, uh, that would be the open telemetry suit of specs uh, covering, as I said, uh, traces, which are um, now uh, already in, in a stable state and logs and um, and metrics which uh, are stabilizing as we speak. And if you think about that, moving existing workloads from an on-premises setup to the cloud, for example, you're running um, a do-it-yourself Kubernetes cluster 
on premises and you want to move to EKS, uh, a use case that we see very often. Having an open source and open standard based solution for your telemetry bits and also observability bits um, is really something that helps you a lot moving, having a smooth transition, having a move migration uh, into the cloud. So this is um, the collection of, of these things is something that is super important for you to remember why you should actually pay attention and have a look at all of that. Last but not least, another tip to get you started. We've put together a workshop that you uh, can use in, in your own time, in your own account, um, where we walk you through all these different setups and uh, technologies, and you can in your own time figure out um, how things work in detail, and you might focus on the one or zoom in on the other. For example, if you're interested in how uh, Container Insights works for ECS, um, then you can drill in here or how to do the uh, you know metrics collection um, with with uh, using Prometheus metrics for CloudWatch. So uh, the takeaway message: these two things: check up open telemetry and our distro, obviously, uh, and have a look at this workshop to uh, get you started to get a feeling for how these things uh, actually are working and how these things uh, can benefit you. All right, with that, thank you very much for um, being here, for tuning in, and please have a look uh, at the survey and give us feedback what you liked. Thank you very much.